Okay, so alexhealthtaxreview.com. Infra's on expert and expert on many different sorts of cutting edge products. Anyways, this video is about if you're evaluating carbon saunas and you're evaluating ceramic saunas as well in general, and let's leave full spectrum over there for now. I have another video on that and there's going to be more information on those types of emitters. Either way, bottom line, uh, if we're looking at these, these are some of the things that you look for in terms of therapeutic efficacy. Okay, so how an emitter is actually going to help you and with your health goals or health conditions. So if that is kind of the, the conversation here, uh, if we're looking at carbons, what you actually request, okay, um, first off, you'll read a bunch of amazing things on their website that'll confuse you when you go read another infrared sauna site's website. So there's that. Uh, and really though, um, to make a proper evaluation of the, let's say carbon emitter now in a sauna, besides looking at the pretty pictures, you have to ask the company to provide you by email, form of writing, in writing basically, the one emissivity rating, for their exact um, emitter that they're putting in there. And the emitter that they're putting in there, usually, with the exception of one company that makes their own carbon type of element, but all the other companies pretty much buy um, emitters, carbon emitters from other manufacturers that just make heaters and freight heaters, okay? So what you want to make sure that when they give you that emissivity rating, which has to do with um, the absorption and release uh, efficiency of infrared at a particular wavelength um, into your body, um, as well as related to the material being used in the emitter, you basically ask them, okay, can you show me the exact patent on the product uh, that you're putting into? So you want, basically you're trying to get to the emissivity rating, efficiency rating, also you can ask them that too, emissivity and efficiency rating for the carbon emitters that you're putting in there. Can you show me that on paper, show me that testing on a manufacturer level and show me that that manufacturer that makes that emitter that has that testing, um, that, that is also what is actually inside of the sauna, okay? Because they might just kind of say, well, this is carbon, and it, this is the emissivity rating over here. Here's an emissivity chart, and there's carbon. I mean, what? <laughs> there's, all these, there's all kinds of different carbon emitters out there and different types of technologies and so on and so forth. So you have to be a little bit more specific than that. You can't just cite a general emissivity table. Okay, or this is ceramic. Ceramic's over there, you know. Okay, well, um, what about all the different generations of ceramic emitters? And I talk about that briefly in my ceramic versus carbon video. So there's different generations. There's different sorts of improvements. Some things have stayed the same. There's different, you know, changes and tweaks to these different sorts of emitters that different sauna companies are using. So you really want to, again, come back to making an apples to apples comparison. So if you want to do that, you have to basically get technical on them and request the key terms in physics that have to do with the performance of the emitter. And say, so if you were comparing a car, right, and you're saying, hmm, well, what's important to me is gas mileage, right? What would you do to compare a Ford to a Toyota Camry? Uh, you'd look at and request, what is your miles per gallon? Right, what's your miles per gallon? Highway and local, right? And you'd get the numbers and you make a comparison. Wow, that was pretty simple to do. Okay, so shouldn't it be that simple with an infrared sauna? Well, the reason that people are confused and complicated is because we haven't gotten it. Most consumers and the sauna companies, usually a lot of them don't want to make it that simple, but you have to get it down to that apples to apples. You have to know what terms and request the exact specs know what you're looking for but here's here's the tip okay is that regardless of your health goal regardless of your health condition um, you have you it always is coming back to the same things which is the quality of the wavelength of infrared and the and how much quantity uh, that is coming off the emitter and how effectively that's absorbing so emissivity rating efficiency 
okay, of the emitter. And that's what we want to test. Um, and I would say that depending on the emitter, it is some and it is sometimes also very helpful to ask for the watt density. Watt density, I'm not gonna to try to get too technical on you, but it is interrelated with the other two factors. In general, I would just ask for all three. And they should have all that, by the way, these different calculations, okay? And if they don't give it to you, red flag number one. Okay, so um, they don't want you to make a comparison, which is understandable for business purposes. They wanna capture that sale. Uh, but at the same time, if a company is doing something different than the same old, same old, old older generation uh, ceramic or older generation carbon or whatever, uh, then they should be, then they're usually more forward about it and very like proud of the fact. Of, look at our performance specs and here you go. You know, take a look for yourself. And they're very upfront and transparent. Okay, so you want to, that's how you make those apples to apples comparison. So then we can see something like, oh, well, this company over here has their own proprietary uh, carbon emitters that they make themselves. It's got a 95% efficiency rating um, in the far infrared based on its peak wavelength function. Uh, and it's peaking, you know, like right around here, around like eight to nine microns. And here's the efficiency of how that lays out. And as I know, this is all technical stuff, but the point is, it's the fact you got the information. And then you can say, hmm, okay, well, this brand B over here that has this nanocarbon or whatever, there's all sorts of different carbons and different trademark terms. You know, this is the efficiency rating and emissivity, and here's the peak wavelength. And let me look at the two together. And okay, this one is, you know, 75% efficient. Okay, so basically, um, then at that point, you can actually say, well, this one being more emissive, being more efficient and based around the cost, because we factor in budget too, I'm going to want that one. So again, your goal is going more for e higher emissivity, okay, and higher efficiency rating, okay, and uh, higher watt density. So this term watt density is not talked about very often, um, although a company that um, knows their product well, <laughs> number one, and likes to be transparent. We'll actually tell you that and, and knows how to calculate that. Hopefully somebody at their company does. But either way, that has a lot to do with, it's simple, you can actually kind of calculate a little bit yourself. You can take the, ask for the total surface area square of all the emitters in the sauna. So if it's carbons, what's the total surface squared inches of all your, of your emitters in your sauna? Then you find out what the total wattage is of those. They'll tell you, well, here's the total wattage. And then, you then take also the amount of wattage um, that's being pulled from your outlet. So they usually tell you somewhere in the specs, it's like, you know, this sauna is 1,250 watts, you know, of total power being used. Um, and from that, then you can, anyways. Uh, so in general, um, what you, it's better to have a higher watt density. And the reason is, as you have a higher watt density, you're creating more infrared um, be, uh, conversion in a, in a in more of a focused way versus having it dispersed and spread out. Um, so for example, some carbon saunas, uh, instead of, they'll basically have um, less square inches of carbons lining the walls and they'll be lower down and they'll be more concentrated. And so that basically means as your watt density goes up, you have more infrared output, more emissivity in a, through less panels basically and what that means is if they're properly put in the sauna as far as good positioning, then it'll actually be irradiating and transferring that energy to your body more effectively, okay? Uh, versus being more spread out and dispersed and heating up the air, right? And then we have basically more of like a traditional convection heat, which is basically like a traditional sauna, now a finished sauna, which is all convection heat for the most part. Okay, we want to we want to get away from that and go more um, to the infrared side of things, um, and that also is you know taking that point a little bit further might be why you also want to go more towards even mid range, getting that in there as well, and getting some near as well, because we're even stepping further and further away from using energy that's warming air. 
and getting more into your body. But that's that's a little bit more of a longer discussion. It's not that quite that straightforward. But anyways, so we look at that. We look at the same specs for ceramics as well. Um, for example, uh, and, and you can usually tell the generation of an emitter based around these specs, usually. So for example, um, these magnesium oxide tube inkaloy rods, uh, they're ceramics. Um, you know, they look like rods that a three, three, three different brands are currently still using. Um, these used to be more commonly used uh, near the beginning of the infrared sauna industry. And used to get super hot and like grill people's backs and leave red lines. Uh, and they did improve and tweak those rods um, uh, a little bit over time so they didn't get so darn hot and that effect stopped happening. They're still more intense on your back than most emitters. Um, some people find that uncomfortable. Um, they do heat up the sauna very fast, but that's side tangent points. When we look at those, um, again, those ratings again, emissivity rating, um, and then we also look at efficiency in what range and the watt density, what we'll basically be able to do is find that in general, those rods are not very efficient, okay, don't have a very high efficiency rating um, for certain parts of the range, like in this case, especially the long wave far infrared, they're very inefficient, very inefficient for the long wave portion, okay? They are putting out more mid, that's good, it's not a bad thing, um, but again, we're just being very specific here. This is how you actually make an apples to apples comparison. And then, you, so for example, if, you, if you, we have found that going for more of the far end of the spectrum, long wave is within your budget and that's what you wanna do for your goals, your health goals, then we would say, well, having a 60% efficiency of foreign for production from this rod, um, and these actual percentages are not far off, but they're not exactly accurate. Um, but they're, it's right around there, very poorly efficient for FAR. Um, then we would basically say, you know, in this case, this, this proprietary carbon, you know, or whatever is, you know, 75, 95 efficient. Okay, this is obviously more, this is going to be more than I, what I want to align myself with. Okay, so again, this is what's really lacking in the industry is companies being very forward about the different sorts of specs. And then the other thing that's missing is how you take those specifications and how wavelength is tied to stimulating different layers of your body and the knowledge of how those different layers and stimulating them differently might st create different effects in your body based around assisting you um, or not helping you with specific health goals or health conditions. See, so there's kind of a, a several links in the chain or the sequence there, which is why nobody ever arrives at a straight answer from most companies. Okay, there are some exceptions, but it's just all kind of like subjective and made up marketing kind of stuff. Um, there's no real like clear understanding, right? And uh, so that's basically it um, with the topic of this, trying to make apples to apples comparisons. These are some of the things that you look at with there's different generations of emitters, but again, regardless of the generation, it all comes back down to getting these different specifications that all companies should be providing you. And furthermore, that the information that you're getting is not coming from the sonic company. It's Well, it's coming from the sonic company, but they didn't do the testing. It's coming from a third party, okay? Manufacturer at least. And if you really want total peace of mind and you just don't trust anybody and it's valid in this industry, um, look for a third party validation. Okay. Uh, a, well, it would be like a, a third, third, a third party validation that is not the manufacturer of the emitter. Okay. And then that would be another party that's evaluating the performance of the infrared. Um, some companies have done this. It's very rare. Uh, but that would be something where then 100% peace of mind, you can absolutely believe that that emitter is doing what it's supposed to be doing, what's claimed, it is putting out what it's supposed to be putting out, and that's what you want because you just dropped $4,000, you need that peace of mind, uh, then that's what you'd be looking for. You'd be requesting two levels of um, validation, basically. Why some companies don't do that validation, I don't know. Um, but uh, it does make you wonder. 
uh, as the testing is not that expensive. And if they're going to make a lot of money over years and years and years and you want to stay competitive with other brands, why not do the testing? Again, I, um, there's no answer to that. So anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you need help, you're tired of watching these long videos, um, just reach out to me on my website, healthhacksreview.com. You can call me, send me an email anytime, and I'd be happy to help you.